We're recording. 20, 20, 24 hours to go. What is it? 93? 93. 93. Look at that. Nueve tres? I don't know how to say 93. Say it like this. 93. We won that war. That's why we're still on the Alamo. Podcast episode 93. April 29th, 79 degrees outside somewhere. Probably not here. It's 79 degrees somewhere, though. Mm. Time is it five ish? Five ish. Five ish. Five ish. Got the new ones or the old ones? These are the older ones. What do you want to talk about? I always print, people always email me shit and I print it out. I'm like, read on podcast. I have a, they they're them. scattered all over my desk. They never get here. I just need to bring them in here when they come in here. Matt Arnold. Wow. Yeah. Implement dealers must be garbage. I live in Ohio. If you walked in a dealer around here, cash or uh, case, international harvester or deer with a cashier's check on a Monday, by Thursday, maybe Friday, there would be a tractor on a low boy pulling in your driveway. I still don't have the tractor, by the way. Still don't. They, so They put the radio in it, but I still don't have the tractor. So the forerunner comes in. And she's been asking him like for two weeks, does this thing have dual temperature zones? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How do you they not know? They don't come with that. And she goes, we have two clients that say they have floor runners. And they have them. So what's, what, which one comes with that, right? So he's like, well, the truck's going to be here, but it's not going to be here until Sunday. So we don't, you'll have to come in like Monday, Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday. And she's like, we're not coming in Monday or Tuesday. It'll have to be the following week. Well, don't you want, yeah, we'll come in the following week. The following weekend, right? Yeah, because we work. So, the truck is there. He starts blowing her up Saturday. Saturday. The truck's here. Uh, we're just going to have to do the pre-inspection. Blah, blah, blah. And he, she goes, does it have dual temperature zones? And he shoots a picture of the dash. And she's like, okay, so does the truck have dual temperature zones? You can clearly see it doesn't, right? So, he's like, well, you didn't ask about, you didn't ask about dual temperature zones when we started talking about the truck. And she goes, well, you guys said three weeks. Had you had John's truck in three weeks, he'd have never known about a fucking dual temperature zone. Nine weeks later, John knows about dual temperature zones. So, <laughs> so yesterday he's like, well, when you when you going to come get the truck? I'm like, just fucking go silent. Stop, just ignore him. Whatever. So he, he thinks he's going to be funny. And he's like, we need to know if you want this truck. We have another offer on it. I'm like, tell him to, suck and, tell him to fucking sell the truck then. Sell it. Get your, your $5,000 addendum. I'll wait till the fucking... Because the new ones will be out in like two months. And they I know for a fact they have dual temperature zones and shit. I'm just kind of over it. I think we get a Sprinter van. Go travel around the world. No, you won't. I'm going to put it on a... I'm gonna put, I'm going to find little barges. I'm going to put it on a barge and go across the river. <laughs> the our river? Our river. They I have, believe have you seen the barge over there? Why do they have that barge? I don't know. You can drive 10 minutes and just be there. <laughs> like, mean. it's faster literally to drive where we're going than to wait for the barge to come and let you load and go across the river. I mean, it's neat. They, they cross over, basically they cross over the town that was flooded. Oh, okay. So he gives a... Like the guy on the boat, and I only know this because Gina's taken that thing like ten times, and he gives a whole spiel on. We're talking about different barge. Where's your oh, barge? This is up, uh, crosses over into like yeah. Aaron. Yeah, it crosses over okay. from Aaron. Yeah. So if you go to Big Sandy, there's a barge right there that literally goes across. Like when you're going across on the barge, you can see the fucking road. I'm like, is there a dude? Is there a dude? With no, the road? What, no, no. But it's it's pretty close to that. Pull him, you'll pull. Close. We we load up. We put four razors and like four four wheelers on there, and the barge is fun. the barge is full. It's like uh, it'd be like blasting around if everything in if everything in Camden was vacant for twenty years, and you pulled up all the asphalt. That's what it's like driving around hmm. over where it goes. It goes over to a place has stop has stop signs and road signs and shit, but all the roads are dirt, not like improved like it's dirt, dirt, it's dirt, dirt. Yeah, yeah, like there's going, no gravel. Yeah. it's just straight dirt. Hmm. Sounds cool. Uh, Gary Vanderchuk said to stay with your parents for as long as possible, but I'm sure he says so people can save money and turn a side hustle into a business. That's, yeah, he, he also says call everybody and collaborate and 
uh, do all this shit. But that's great. But you're just leeching off the system. You need to get out in the world, become a man. If you're if you're a man and you're living at home with your parents, you need to check your man card. If your parents are paying for your phone, you need to check your man card. If your parents insurance. are paying for your insurance, you need to check your man card. You're not an adult until you're out in the real world. Mom's doing your clothes. Mom's if you, yeah. If you take your clothes home every weekend and have your mom, you're not an adult. You're just pretending like you're an adult. So don't get into adult conversations if you still live at home. On the other hand, some some moms want you to come home, so... No, that's fine if you want to go home and visit your mom, but you should better be doing shit for her, not the other way around. Great podcast as always. I've been hearing them twice each, listening when y'all first post it, and then watch, then it. watch it on YouTube. Well, y'all can't have my boys. <laughs> I'd miss them too much. Oh, we'll have your boys. You'll see. But I will let you borrow them whenever you want. Ha, huh? I let them both watch yesterday when you spoke about them on Podcast 87. And they just thought it was so cool. They really liked you and thought you were a rad dude. And still talking about all the cool shit you showed them. They can't wait to come back. Any news on the Purple Day Packs? Uh, purple Day Packs were cut today. Were they? Yeah. The, because oh, I, yeah. Material because I went, up, I went up to, because so that bin was on the floor, was Typhon, and I went to put them in. I go, what's all this purple bullshit? And it's all the purple. I forgot packs. the purple came in yesterday. Um, they, really, they really liked you, thought, uh, can't wait to come back. Any news on the purple day packs? You said you may be making a few. I want to make sure I get one. I love the podcast. John Scully, thanks for giving us the attention for an hour and sometimes more out of your busy days. Love the encouragement. Love the stories. Love the content. Keep them coming. Liberty Chick, you need a hobby. A hobby? Why? What is she well, doing? Because she's listening to us twice. Yeah. So she, maybe she has a hobby and she's doing her hobby while she's listening to us. You need to garden. Well, she would still listen. Power walk? Garden. Power walk, maybe. She can uh, still listen. Choreograph. What's that? What's that swim dance shit? Oh, yeah. What is that? That is... Dig, uh, dig a pool pond. And it's synchronized swimming. Synchronized swimming. It's a high diving. Event. You need you to high dive a, into a. It could be an Olympic. How do they dive into a 55 gallon drum? Is there really like a, a fucking tunnel of water underneath that thing? I don't thing? know how they dive into a 55. How gallon about cannon? You should do cannonball. I want to be launched out of a cannon. Does anybody do that anymore? Like, I'll is bet there somewhere? Sh is in there Russia, some I'll shows? Bet they, I'll bet you can do it. Because the circus is closed, so you can't. The circus is closed. You can't really do that anymore. Comment on Podcast 90. Scully, I know how you can get a chance to experience with every one of the firearms you have in your inventory at home on all of the various dirt bags. And No, nah, we're not doing that one. Um, Scully, I need your professional opinion. I want a new deer rifle. Mostly used, mostly used from a stand. I want a 308. I'm thinking a Remington SPS Tactical. It's a 20-inch heavy barrel Hogue. Over molded puller bedded stock, pillar bedded stock, etc. About 800 bucks or an AR 10. I only make neck and head shots. It's better for the meat because they die instantly. And two, I don't have to track them after I shoot them. I'm old and lazy. The, I mean, that's a lot. You're, you're, you're doing a lot of gun for deer hunting. I mean, it's a lot of gun for deer hunting. If you feel like you need a lot of gun, uh, go with the AR-10, because you can do more with the AR-10. Plus, it looks uh, cool. You know, the reality is, when we hunt, when we hunt nowadays, just because There's a of, lot of fucking population... There's a lot of deer killed with 30-30s. Yeah, just because or of... 22s. Just because of technology, there's really no reason to hunt with a fucking bolt gun anymore. There's, I mean... The technology's there, the accuracy's there, the consistency's there, and you can do so much more with a semi-automatic rifle system than just hunt deer. So I'd go with the I'd go with the AR-10. You can do more with it later on if you need to. I don't know, shoot aliens or plus it looks defend fucking, against plus hamsters. Plus it looks rad. Yeah, I mean, that's if you the, ever if you ever need to sit on a bridge and just shoot fucking zombies as they're coming over the horizon. Yeah, you're gonna to want to do it with the with the gas gun versus the. Or you need to set up gun. a blockade on the bridge to keep the bad guys from coming from you know Memphis into I don't know Camden. Bad it's, guys, like who? Whoever's coming from Memphis. Hmm. After the New Madrid kicks off. And After cuts, the mood, cuts New the Madrid United. kicks off, cuts the United States in half. Hey guys, the podcast is shit. No, he said this. The podcast is the shit. He said it is shit. 
John, I was bored at work and looked into Mud Flood, and holy fuck, a few hours later, I found myself listening to some shit about the old church moss domes and spires, our antennas, collecting and transmitting free energy from the air. I told you. Some shit down the conspiracy rabbit hole is straight retarded, but some gets you thinking maybe history isn't what they say it is. Well, the cool thing is like the photos, right? When you see the... When you see all the photos from all around the world where they talk about these mud flood sites and the old basements where they've built new structures on top of them, and then you start looking into some of these these how some of these big mansions and shit, right? There's no blueprints for them. When you pull the when you go to pull the blueprints, they don't exist. Like they're physically just they're not in existence. And then they show you like, was this a mud flood? And then they show like it's just fucking crazy, the mud that has encased all these fucking monuments and stuff. Um, just look into it. There's, there's definitely some crazy, yeah, a bunch of it is very far-fetched. Like, all the andirons in the fireplaces with the balls on top, they're saying those were, you know, the fireplaces and the andirons and the antennas are free energy devices. I saw all the same stuff you saw. Quite, but you, it's weird that they don't just come out and say it. Like, you have to watch 20 videos and take a piece and a piece and a piece. It's almost like they're embarrassed to tell you what it is they want you to hear. But they, they do, man. They give you that little nibble, that little nibble, and then the, there's just an empty hook. And you know it's a hook, but they whi they whip it in real fast and put another little fucking piece of corn in there, and you're just nibbling at it like a minnow. Um, what's the absolute craziest, most out there conspiracy thing you've heard or looked into that you actually think may be legit? Um, craziest. I don't know, man. The, pharm the pharmaceuticals... Um, Pharmaceuticals, the uh, poisoning of your food. Look up poisoning, poisoning the water. Um, I mean, I, I believe that shit's definitely real. The uh, the fluoride stuff, bromine, chlorine, uh, blocking your receptor sites and stuff. Um, all you motherfuckers are wrong. Five oh three. The real meaning is that's how many chicks John has fucked. No, that is not. Uh, that is it's a not. low number for John. No, that's a that's a pretty high number. It's a little number for John. When you guys were talking about assisted suicide, all I could think about was the suicide booths from Futurama. I think if you don't want to live anymore, no one can make you. It's your fault. You're an adult to do whatever you want as long as it's not affecting other people. Have a good one. Is uh, is you killing yourself not affecting other people, though? If, uh, yeah, I mean, it, that's they say that that's what it does the most. It's effect of the people, so, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Most dudes break up with their girl. Well, usually chick breaks up with her, so he kills himself. That's because he thinks that she's going to live the rest of her life um, concerned and upset that, you know, he killed himself. Like, she's going to be remorseful. And she is for about 72 hours, but she's going to probably fuck your brother. So, if you're going to kill yourself over some chick, all you're doing is ending your shit and probably hurting your family. Because that bitch you're doing it over... She's going to fuck your brother. Scully, some guy asked what SOE gear you brought to the war, and you replied you have been in multiple wars. So, what gear did you bring to the Battle of Los Angeles to fight off the aliens? The documentary shows Marines deploying from Pendleton, so I'm sure you were there. I was there. As a matter of fact, I was on, if you want to know the, if you want to know the truth, I was on Crenshaw and Alameda. Right across the street from the Compton Watts in a small town called Southgate. Our job was to defend Southgate from the alien hordes that were trying to get across to the, um, who's the high-end gun company? Weatherby Gun Store that is, is oh, there. Oh, yeah. There's so, a, you know there's a Weatherby right there in Atlanta, too. We drove really? Hmm. Uh, so, yes, I was there. But at that time, uh, did I have any SOE gear? Was that Weatherby Manufacturing? I don't manufacturing? know if I did. Or that was a Weatherby shop. It was a Weatherby shop. It was the big. It's the biggest Weatherby gun store in Los Angeles County. Hmm. It's nice to watch another podcast. I've taken your advice and started a side hustle. I already have everything I needed. Went out, went out and got a few customers, and now I'm busy six days a week. I started doing lawn care and pressure washing. I'm proud to say, in a few weeks, I've made a little over three thousand dollars. Thanks for all you do and keep up the podcast. John, look into getting New Holland tractor. Scully, look into getting New Holland tractor. I've used them and they are diehard. Those are the blue ones, right? Yeah, I've, I mean, I, we I looked at all, blah, 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 went all through the thing, and the 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 common thing really is 
I would say that all the tractors are pretty much exactly. Yeah, I know that you, the the John Deere guys are gonna go no, and the Kubota guys are gonna go no. But here's the thing: in my area, like. I have literally had conversations with, because I don't know shit about tractors. For me, I was like, I got to get a John Deere tractor, right? That's the American tractor. I got to get a John Deere tractor. No, it's not the American tractor, because nobody makes a tractor in the United States anymore. So I'm like, okay, whatever. But the common denominator I have around here is, like in my area, is I've literally had like three people tell me, because I was looking at Mohindra and a couple other ones, and I've literally had three people tell me, we can't be friends if you don't buy a Kubota tractor. So it's kind of like, okay, whatever. The tractor's a tractor is a tractor. I get it. People are diehard fans. But I'll get the Kubota because they have 0% financing right now. So it doesn't really cost me anything to finance whatever money they have. So, Chris, uh, Kubota. Good job on good job on hustling. Let yeah, me, let get me that say a couple going. things about that. Um, cash is yours. Nobody knows that it happened. If you're being paid with a check, it's going into a bank. Nobody knows it happened, but sooner or later, somebody's going to know it happened. You don't really have to worry about it right now, but be prepared for that. You need a you need a. You're eventually depending where you are. You're going to need a business license as well, and fucking insurance and all kinds of bullshit. So. Just know what that is, because as soon as you're doing work and keeping somebody else, somebody else comes around and they're like, no, Bob's mowing my lawn. No, Chris Seaton's been mowing my lawn. Those are the dudes that are going to report you. So be prepared for that. Um, know what you need to do when you need to do it. Go talk to, at your level, you can probably just talk to a bookkeeper um, for your taxes. But 31 cents of everything you need make needs to go into uh, tax account. You When you set up your business accounts, depending on your bank, they're going to charge you or you have to have minimums in your accounts or whatever. But you're going to set up operating account and that is not your personal account. Keep them separate. I know I know that you made $3,000 and you're like, I can spend 1000 of this and I'll put 2000 back in. Wait till you hit 10, 15 grand before you buy any equipment or do anything unless it will immediately make you more money. But right now you're one dude. And as soon as you bring your brother in there, he's going to be like, man, Chris is making all this money and he's only giving me, you know, $14 an hour or $8 an hour. Fuck him. I'll go buy a lawnmower and just do some mowing. And what he's going to, you know, maybe not your brother or whatever, but he's going to go to your little Betsy and be like, Betsy, I'll come over and mow your, your grass when Chris isn't here. And, you know, I'll, I'll cut your flowers also for free. Whatever it is. Be prepared for that shit. Operating account, tax account, payroll account. Keep that money separate. Every dollar you make, you can do it once a week or you can set it so that it automatically does it every day, whatever it is. 31 cents goes into that tax account because that's what the IRS is going to take from you. And whether they take it now or you hide it and five years later they find it, and then they're going to take twice as much of that 31 cents. So just be prepared for that. Have that in your head. As long as you start that way, you're fine. And then let the money make money. When you have the money in the account, the money will make more money. You will be able to make moves and do things you want. Like right now, I don't know what you're using for a pressure washer, but eventually you're going to want a pressure washer that has its own heat system and its own water tanks. And you're going to want to be able to do different things and heat from, from the, uh, you know, the trailer. You're going to want a fucking self-contained unit. Get on, uh, get on Craigslist and look. just start looking at this. Put in pressure washer. You'll see what I'm talking about if you don't know. And just... Know what you're working towards, your mowers. Even though you have ride-on mowers, you still need walk-behind mowers, and you need string trimmers. And right now you're buying them from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, and you're buying consumer grade. But when you go into, um, when you go into commercial grade stuff, that's very, very different stuff. Get on uh, Facebook, search, uh, just search lawn mowing. You will find closed groups of people that do nothing but lawn care. Get in there. Um, I wouldn't get in there and post a lot. I would just get in there and read a lot. You will know where the markets are. You'll know how these guys are marketing. You'll know what they're doing, what they don't want to do. Um, just check that out in your area, man. Just just some food for thought. Um, hey, John and Scully, I recently played... And I, and I say that because I've looked into all that. Because if I wasn't doing this, I'd be fucking mowing lawns. I'm surprised he doesn't mow lawns anyways. Outside um, of the 10 that he mows around here. I... 
I've looked at a bunch of mowers this weekend, like wash lines. I'm getting some. There's two. There's the the rep is dropping two X mark walk behind mowers off for me to demo at the place. They make a walk behind. It's 26 inch cut. Has two blades. Self propelled. Does it have a stand where you can stand on it? They have those also, but that's not. I I think those look silly. I'm not. I refuse. I'm just gonna walk behind it. Uh, hey John and Scully, I recently placed my second, or, my second and third order of Made in the Motherfucking USA gear and got an EDC belt a few months ago. Can't wait to save up to purchase some more. Thinking about getting a Fupa, I could use a new wallet unless I overlooked something. It uh, it looks like all the wallets are sold out. Do you plan on making more? We have some wallets. Well, every I I every wallet. Color. I don't know what you're looking at. Every wallet on the website is it's wide open. open. Yeah. You can order. You should be able to order all of them. Our micro wallet, Slim ID card case, um, and our wallet. Just the the wallet. That's our full size. We have hundreds. Uh, there's fucking well over a hundred sitting out there. Yeah, I'm just not sure the color. The I'm. I want to say mat. that you're mistaken. Um, and then as far as saving up to buy some stuff, man, I would I would tell you don't buy anything that you don't need from us right now. If you if you got to say that you're saving up for it, man, just get yourself in a better position. Um, buy stuff that you'll use. Don't buy stuff that's going to sit in the closet. Um, visor cover goes in your vehicle. Wallet you'll always use. Belt you'll always use. Fupa's cool because you can carry all your shit in it for a lot of different applications. So let us know what we can do for you. John, do you put any spray waxes on your dirt bike razors, etc.? I tried a bunch and watched the wet sand hard wax YouTube videos. Wondering, wondering then, and if Pierre got the baller whip done yet? Thanks, SOE and crew. Gabby, you're awesome. Brian Fraser, I don't know what the baller whip is. Um, it's probably the, the two seater. Um, because that was the last vehicle that he worked on, right? Was the two seater? Pierre? Yeah, the Porsche. Oh, yeah, the, the both the Porsches are here. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. Um, I don't use any of that stuff on the the razors. The because when we clean them, like we clean the razors. I actually had a dude like detail the razors without fail, man. Two hours later, we're out fucking. We got them. They don't even look like they've been washed. The real reason that I wash the razors is just to cut down on all the dirt and shit coming in the garage. Like that's we go we go out back when we bring them in. Same with the mower wash them all from the top down and then spray all the gunk out of the wheels and then run them around the building a few times to get everything out of the treads so that when we pull them in the garage it just cuts all the dirt and shit down uh just a thought maybe at a hundred push the podcast to a weekly basis i think all the listeners including myself would completely understand I know you all have to take an hour or more out of every day to do them and that time adds up also also, my question today is what happened to Brandon Miller? I discovered his YouTube channel that the day before he made the video saying he took a job at SOE and he hasn't made a video since. He seemed like a super nice guy and had some pretty good content. Also, keep us posted on Scully's ghillie orders. And I think, did anybody contact you about that? No, I don't have any ghillie orders, guys, so. I think you're right, John. For a thousand bucks a piece, Scully will be far more busy than he already is. I will, Thanks again. For a thousand bucks, I will wear that motherfucker, I will do a stock in it, and I will pee in it. Because every, every ghillie suit gets peed in it. So I will I will have a documented stock. I don't know who I'll use as observers. I'll get some, I'll get some real fucking snipers to come. Be observers. You have Joe do it. They'll be amazed because I'll fucking beat them every single time. I heard I heard he's a wingman. He said you're his wingman. No, Joe is uh Joe's so far out Joe's so far out of it, he's not even I wouldn't even take him as my wingman. Oh shit. If he's he would be too he would be oh, too busy shit. jumping up and snapping photos of shit. That sounds like he just slapped you with a glove, sir. So, Good sir. Uh, if you want uh yeah. We'll throw it out on the ground here and sprinkle seeds all over it. It'll be growing when you get it. <laughs> um, as far as Brandon, I don't know what Brandon's doing, man. I don't I don't know what he's doing. I didn't know he hadn't done any videos. Uh, he's on Facebook. I know he's done some videos here and there on uh, Facebook. So uh, check him out. Um, Scully, on your end of the world kit, i.e. M40A1, AR-15, 1911s, why not save weight and combine your rifles to something like a Mark 12 SPR? Just curious. 
because uh, the Mark 12, because here's a, here's a familiar thing when people try and do that, when they try and combine things. It's a jack of all trades, master of none. A Mark 12 will not perform as well, the Mark 12 will not perform as well at long ranges against a bolt gun. And it, while it while it will do some things that a fucking M4 carbine is, M4 carbine is just for defensive purposes. And bitch, I was in the Marine Corps for 20 years. That is not a lot of weight. That is not a lot of weight. I didn't even talk about ammo, grenades, water. One day I'll, maybe one day I'll bring in the pictures of all the shit I used to carry. That's not a lot of weight. Um, he still does. Outside of he the... He still does. If you sneak over to his house, he's out there every Saturday wearing all that bullshit in his fucking underwear and flip flops. Out, outside of the 19... Because, like... I, his knee ain't bad. He's I know. Still, he gets a thorn in his toe every weekend. I know that... Uh, I'm just I'm just nostalgic about the 1911, or I'm nostalgic about carrying a pistol. If if truth be told, and you're really honest, you know, if you're as a military professional, if you're really honest, there is no fucking reason to bring a pistol. There's no fucking reason to bring a pistol to a gunfight, unless you're a fucking ninja and you got a fucking suppressor on it, and you're sneaking up to the fucking, you're sneaking up to the the duty, and you're. Popping him in the back of the head with a 22. There's really no reason to bring a fucking pistol. Because when it gets time to pull that pistol out, if you're in a gun, real gunfight, and it gets time to pull that pistol out, you are going to feel like the limpest dick in an orgy that you could <laughs> ever, you will not, there, it's not, unfortunately, it's not like John Wick. You don't run around shooting everybody with a pistol. Uh, so I use a pencil. Yeah, pencil or stuff like that. It's not, that's... You know, I, I know in the movies everybody throws their rifle down and pulls out their favorite pistol to go to town on people. But the dudes with the rifles are going to win. I don't give a shit how badass you are with a pistol. The dudes with the rifles are going to win. So, when, when the I just carry out? it. I carry it for nostalgia. So, in case I have to do any cleanup shots, you know, I can put my hand right here so the blood doesn't get in my eyes. And then, pew. When the zombies come, I'm going to kill a man with every one of them swords I have upstairs. Well, that's different. I mean, that's kind of like not like chop. I mean, I'm just gonna. You gotta. Boop. And when the zombies come, it's it's it will come to the point where it's the most the hordes. Well, you'll get to a point when it's the zombies. You'll get to the point where you're gonna get points for the most interesting way you kill a zombie. So it's gonna be about you know really dropping a piano on top of a zombie or we'll remake all of the fucking yeah. uh, Roadrunner cartoons. Just, that's what I'm saying. It'll be about. Putting a giant firecracker on the back of a zombie and shooting up up in the air. It'll I got be a piano like right that. out back we can drop on something. Yes, we do. We should we should hoist it up on the building so it's just but actually that's not vicariously a bad idea. I've always wanted to have a there. crane here. We should just get a crane to keep our piano I'm just, up. I'm in just the thinking air. swinging up high enough with a some hemp rope that doesn't look very stable. I like it. I like it. Episode eighty seven, Cornbread Mafia is the new reason for the decoder ring hashtag decoder ring SOE cereal box giveaway hashtag cereal box sale might be a decoder ring please john laugh out loud gotta be a generic decoder ring company cheap thanks SOE and crew we could probably get little orphan annie decoder rings for cheap oh shit and then you know what some place the... some place there's a building full of them right now you know what the message will be i'll bet brandall will know where to find them the message will be buy more SOE, SOE. gear buy more oval team <laughs> There isn't a conversation with a spare tire buying a car either way, new or used. It has to come with it. It's a safety issue. It's mandated death by an OEM or state safety law on the norm. I ran a dealership for 20 years and my family is in the business. So do not let anyone tell you <coughs> or sell you a car without a spare tire. Some will try because it costs in case it comes with from the dealership well i don't think that that was ever thought to be the case i would assume that it has to come with a spare tire i think we were using that as an example daniel marshall daniel he's about oh. to counter it here in the uk some cars are sold without spare tires our, and it's weird too because our tires are spelled differently than your tires they just have a can of tire sealant and oh you know what I want to say that is the case. I want to oh, say... Does the, did the Porsche come with a spare tire? Yeah, I want to oh. say my Porsche does not have a spare tire. Maybe it does. Because it did come with a fucking... Came with a battery pack and a compressor. Both Porsches. 
I don't know if I have a fucking spare. There's no goddamn spare tire. In that I, car. I, 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 I know the little one. Where the fuck would it be? Yeah, there's. I don't have spare tires in either of my Porsches. You'd now have that to you mention it. Mount it to they, a Yeah, they do not come with spare tires. I own two Porsches. There is not a spare tire in either of them. They come with a gel fucking thing and a compressor. They come with a, a fucking tire repair deal. And I know BMWs now uh, come with run flat tires. I want to say they can. You can drive 35 miles for 100 miles. I think it is. Oh, that means. That means you could go like three, four. three or yeah. four years on that tire. Yeah. Around here. Here in the UK, some kind of uh, can of tire sealant or some other bit of crap. I say crap as most car magazines at some point have stories about how they'll get a flat tire on a pothole. UK roads are mainly potholes with a little bit of tarmac here and there, and then a standard as the sealant won't seal a hole in the tire side wall piss poor state of affairs or when you hit a pothole the size of your fucking range rover mm -hmm. and it actually bends your, your wheel yeah. um youtube porn is legal with a warning and age restriction laugh out loud john it could be any sport or mutter type american gladiator shit local tennessee girls might get it done team style tennessee versus high rent Next thing you know, other hood clubs and hard areas have teams calling. Stripper gladiators, Tennessee versus the world, Russian team in training now on YouTube. No USA dates, juice to the tits, or high like, yeah, I, yeah, I like I'm not thinking idea. the same thing. Who is this? Brian Frazier. Holy shit. I like the idea. We got a, you got a whole network there. Future, I guarantee you there's some ESPN channel that we could get that on. Anyone wanting to plant or own dirt, you can mail a sample from areas on property. USDA Agriculture Center in Beltsville, Maryland will test it and mail results to you for free. Did that on my first house in 2003 in Georgia. Ex-wife found it on the internet. pH and thinning pines out front grass grew beautiful on sand. Seeds and was what seed and all was in their advice thanks soe and crew it's a good idea what about elongated skulls ever come across them i've seen i see them for sale every day um the issue is i'm in tennessee and those are not tennessee is one of three states that has laws um about that you can buy anything as long as it's in tennessee, tennessee. it cannot cross state lines in or out of tennessee uh I would have a fucking I would have a, a museum's worth of that shit. The, the pro I see it for sale. I can I know right where to buy it. The problem is I'm in Tennessee. Uh, awesome podcast guys. What is in your opinion, Scully? What is the best way to make cash caches of ammo, guns, and so on? I mean, why? I don't know. If you feel like you gotta. If you look, if you feel like you got to run around the countryside and bury guns, I mean, you're you're in more of a you're in more trouble than not. But there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of actually books that you can get on caching weapons, especially like in your in your own home. Uh, I can't sneaky if they think if they think that's a possibility. Like when they raid you, they uh, find those books or. When they start looking through your internet search history, they're going to come in and x-ray your shit. Uh, we knew a dude who I want to say was in San Clemente when they raided his house. CID or NCIS raided his house looking for something. And they actually were x-raying. They were x-rayed his water heater and a bunch of other shit. Um, and he had a boat. So like they were they were real interested in where his boat had been and where that was getting cashed. And that was, that guys, that was 20 years ago. I think uh, the, the better thing for you to do is just move to a state where you don't feel like you have to have cache sites for weapons. Uh, truth, you know, I say this all the time, truth be told. Truth be told, when the day comes that they're looking for guns, there's going to be guns. There's going to be guns. I mean, you're going to... You, yeah, it'll, it'll suck if fucking uh, the cops come to your house, knock on your door, and they're like, hey, guess what? We're here for all your guns. But... That's not going to last very long before the before the Civil War breaks out. And we have more firearms in the United States than the rest of the entire world. And I'm, I'm including the military firearms. We have more firearms 
here in the United States and the rest of the entire world. So, AOC becomes president and the revolution begins. There's going to be fucking guns everywhere. Like, guns everywhere. That's the thing I hate about the zombie apocalypse movies. You're going to be fucking going, Man, I just can't carry all these guns because there's going to be so many fucking guns everywhere. Uh, so, I, I mean, I'm not a... I'm not... A, unless you're... Unless... I don't know where you're at, because I'm thinking the United States, if you're in Laos and you're getting ready to do a mission into into North Vietnam to rescue POWs, there's a lot of good ways to cache weapons. If you find a cache, don't use any of the 762 by 39 because that's all been booby-trapped by the CIA, so stay away from that. And if and if we're if we're really talking cache sites, like what application, like your house burnt down, so you need some stuff because you're on the way somewhere else. Um have your plan, um, know where you're going, and then have a secondary plan in the opposite direction because the fire line might be moving that direction mm -hmm. and you can't go that way. So have a plan to go somewhere else and then have three routes to get there, the main way, and then figure out two other and practice those. Drive them. Get up, get up in the middle of the night, wake your kids up, fucking put them in a car and go do it and see how that goes. Um, surely you have somebody you know on the way there. You could just leave a bag at a friend's house or you know, relative's house, <clears throat> don't have anything in that bag because they're going to look. Like, just, you know, know that shit. Uh, storage unit's good if you're really worried. Depend I don't know the application of this. Um, so, I mean, if you have a storage unit, rent it in your name. Find one that'll take cash, mom and pop. I mean, they're all around here. I, I don't, I don't have, I've never been to a storage unit around here, but I would assume they're not technologically advanced around <laughs> here. They would just do it. You know, you could pay it for a year and that's the end of it but in the city even when i lived in san diego fucking 12 years ago you had to show id and fucking a thumbprint and some a mm -hmm. semen sample and all kinds of shit to rent a storage unit so it's just one of those it's never a problem till it's a problem you have all your shit cash there and the fucking place burns down they find remnants of all these guns well that's going to be a fucking problem you know um when i told my doctor i was doing keto we were in the examining room. She started whispering like she was giving me the nuke codes and said, everything can, be everything can be corrected with nutrition. I think she didn't want the other doctors hearing her in the room <laughs> beside us. Could be true. I mean, medicine, when you're in that field, they get very this way. They're very straightforward. This is what we're going to do. These are the pills we're going to force down your throat. So it could be true that she's just she didn't want her peers to hear that. I had an idiot nurse tell me how unhealthy keto was. Meanwhile, I lost 100 pounds and fixed my diabetes. Doctor came in and praised my work. Fucking good on you, man. Congratulations on, uh, on getting that weight off. Fat Shut nuts. Up. I'd love to hear all your knowledge on the pumpkin chunkin and castle siege advice. Big building, kind of like a castle. Thanks, S-Wing Crew. I just had a man here in the store, in the shop today, who builds buildings. And we actually were talking about Fat Nuts. Um, he has no idea who Fat Nuts is. Um, I was just saying, you know, we know a guy that builds buildings. And we were talking about the different... Because you always see in the magazines, right? $20,000, 40 by 60 building. Yeah, there there is one, but... There's not much building there for that. And as soon as you get an ice load a or, a, or a, a brisk wind. <laughs> a lot of skin. There was a lot of steel buildings when we moved to Camden, right? Six years ago, we had ice. We don't ever have ice like this here. Oh, we're never going to have that. That hasn't happened in 100 years. And then one day, six years ago, it rained. It, it rained and froze. And then it was super sunny. And then it froze again really quick. And a bunch of buildings from here to Paris, about a 20-minute drive, 30-minute drive, fell down. Like, there's a bunch of slabs on the way there. Those buildings are flattened. So, it, it's, it's one of those, it's not a problem until the fucking day it's a problem. I with you, Scully. I don't eat <coughs> them anymore, but I love most of the Hostess's products. All that sugar and flour had to go. Why Kubota? I told you just because there's, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm behind enemy lines with the Kubota people. Because I want a skid steer. And so people are just like, you got to get a Kubota or we won't be friends. I'm not allowed to come over to your house. You don't have Kubota. So I had to get a Kubota. Scully, what ammo do you use in your carry ammo? 
depends on what I'm carrying. Uh, HST 230 grain hollow points federal for the 45, and then I bought a bunch of that. Uh, Is that hollow point special tip? No. Do you give her the special tip? I give her the whole thing, never the tip. And then uh, I bought a bunch of that FBI ammo, the uh, G2 ammo, uh, thinking that. What's a bunch? A bunch. For my nine millimeters, and come on a truck. Guess what? Did the, it did come on a truck? Not a not a. I didn't need a forklift or nothing. Um, interesting, and I always say this. I, I bought the ammo because I really just bought the ammo because I have a I had a really good sniper friend who was up there at Quantico, and the FBI Academy is just down the street, and the FBI agents came in, and they're like, "Ooh, ooh this is the best ammo in the world." He's like, he brought me a box, and he's like. This is the only, you, they did all the tests. This is the only ammo the FBI is ever going to use. I go, you know, the FBI says that about every five years. They come out with a, a new gun or a new thing. And they're like, this is the best because we tested it. And I go, and, Ruger, and, then they, and then they change it. Well, I bought all that ammo. I'm like, okay, whatever. This will be the, this will be the in case of war if I'm carrying the 9mm. And what did the FBI do this year? They bought different ammo. They're not going with that ammo anymore. <laughs> because, I, I don't know, why? Because the, the FBI is the FBI. They're, they're overthinking it. So, uh, But anyways, that's that's really the, the carry ammo I do. It's uh, the HST and then the... Uh, and then right now, if I'm carrying 9mm, it's the G2 ammo. Scully, I posted a while back, but I think you guys missed it. What do you think about a fast food tax? I'm not much for taxes. It's theft and proof positive of the corrupt system. But heart disease is the number one killer in the United States, and it's because of the bullshit people eat because they're too lazy to pack moderately healthy lunch for themselves. Let me stop there. Okay, so we tax it. What account's that money going into? Because you know damn well it's not going to fucking heart disease. It's going to go to some fucking senators, and it's going to get commingled, and it's not going to fucking fix anything. It's just another tax. How many burgers does McDonald's sell every day? Imagine if there was a $1 tax on every burger, taco, burrito sold every day in the United States. The health care issue would be solved. It wouldn't be solved. It wouldn't be solved. Those people, they're going to pay it. Just like we need more taxes on cigarettes. They didn't stop smoking cigarettes. Cigarettes went from what they used to be ten dollars a carton, Fuck, twenty dollars. Yeah, now they're a hundred dollars a carton or something. Fucking outrageous. They're, they're not going to. They're still going to fucking. It's not going to solve the problem. It's just going to fucking make rich people richer. And taxing. Here's the here's the thing about a tax like that. So, taxing soda pop or taxing fucking uh, McDonald's is like taxing gas. It ordinarily it affects the poor more than anybody else it affects the poor more than anybody else so the people who are having the hardest time putting food on the table you are going to go after with a giant tax that's not the way to do it what really what you should be trying to figure out is what really you should be trying to figure out is how to make them all grow some food why is a motherfucking why is a damn hamburger why is a fucking hamburger 58 cents and a salad is ten dollars that's really what you should be trying to figure out. That's really what we should be trying to do is create healthier choices within those establishments for people to make proper choices. The best way to do it is through education, not tax. Taxes taxes don't solve problems. They only make bigger problems. That's all they do is make bigger fucking problems. Taxation is total theft. And putting a tax on any of that stuff is not only ignorant, but it will affect the lowest common denominator in America. People are really, unfortunately, those meals are putting food on tables that wouldn't otherwise be there because of how cheap that food is. I mean, it's it's getting more expensive. Fuck, you go there now and a, a meal is 10 bucks or whatever, but it's still cheaper than the alternative. That's really what we should be focused on is not how do we tax McDonald's out of existence. Really what we should be focused on is why is a fucking salad more expensive than a fucking hamburger, a bun, fries? All those things came from all over the United States. That should be more, just in carbon alone, that should be more expensive than it is. Imagine if there's a $1 tax on every burger, taco, burrito sold every day in this country. Healthcare issue would be solved. Yes, low-income people would bitch, but at the same time, they find money 
They find the money for iPhones and Xbox games so they can save it. It's not it's not uh, just them, man. It's not yeah, you're looking at it completely wrong. There's plenty of fucking fat bitches wrong. that are that are fucking not fucking homeless. You gotta you you have to educate and you have to come up with cheap, healthier alternatives. If you do not the tax ain't gonna do shit. They're just gonna fucking spend more money at McDonald's and then fucking Ray Kroc, rest in peace. Is gonna buy more fucking stadiums and more fucking uh, sports teams, and he's gonna be laughing because of all the money he's gonna make. Or it's gonna be like California; it's gonna go into the general fund, and then you'll never know what happens to it. It'll just disappear like all your gas taxes. Meanwhile, Diane Feinstein, one of the richest women in California, will be wanting to know why the gas is taxes. So yeah, high. well, why the gas tax is so high. John, one of these days, I'm going to take a class at Tack Response in Camden. There are multiple things I want to see and do while I'm there, such as drop by the SOE shop. But one thing, the main things I want to do is get up early and go work out with you. I have to see these five dickheads you speak of firsthand. There are similar dudes like them at my local gym. I think the gyms hire them. I think every gym has those guys. I think they, uh, they actually are on the payroll. I have to see these five similar dudes at my local gym. They are there every evening, glad, glad handing and talking to everyone in the place like they're like they're a celebrity. I get it. They are lonely, and their only community, and it's their only community. But they do actually work out most often. But they do or don't. But they, they do actually work out most often. They have sweat beating down their bald heads. So I guess. That's somewhat respectable. I just, I don't think so. I think they spray each other when you're not looking. I, w I just can't wrap my mind around how clueless these guys are from the, from my, in your gym. If one of them jumped on a machine I was using, I might lose my religion. Have you ever considered they are just fucking with you? They have to know they, that you don't like them. Sorry for, what do you think? You think they, think they're fucking with me? No, I don't, I, no, no they're oblivious. They're, they're... I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure now they kind of, they're like, yeah, he doesn't talk to anybody. But as far as they're trying to fuck with him, no, uh -huh. that's just the way they are. It's just, it's the same guy that puts weights on the bench press and then fucking walks away with it. They did it today. And then he comes back 30 minutes later and he's like, I'm going to go I'm in there. I'm still using it. Does, I'm going to go in there today because my shoulder's fucked up. I'm not flat benching or I'm not benching with a barbell. I'm on a hammer strength on a chest press independent you know and then i go to an incline chest press that's what i need and i go in and dildo has fucking his bullshit loaded up on the incline and then he's going from there to the other side of the gym to a pec deck and then going to another place in the gym to another fucking pec deck so finally after i've done chest six sets i did two light light high you know 50 rep warm-ups i throw some weight on i'm doing my shit and then i'm gonna go from I'm going to go from um, flat, chest, incline, and then I'm going to go do T-bar rows. And then I'm going to do a little bit of shoulders, and then I'm going to do some um, pec deck. So I go ahead and I just skip my incline. So I've done flat now um, on the hammer strength. I've done six sets of T-bar row on a, uh, on a you know, machine uh, plate load. And finally, I've just had enough of these retards. There's nobody. They're not standing there. They've got their shit loaded up. So I just fucking took their weights off. And one of the dudes walked over and he stood there and I never got up. I just fucking got up to put more weight on. I just went in 10 pound increments on each side um, and just did my shit. They never fucking came back and got on that machine after I unloaded it. Um, that's just them. Whatever. I have all that shit here now. Every fucking piece of equipment, almost, almost every piece of equipment that I use at the gym... I now have in our gym. What are you here. missing? I don't have a pec deck. There's a few things I don't have. I've got all. I have almost everything. I don't have a lying um, leg curl. I don't have that. I don't have a pec deck. Um, there's a couple other little, but I can do majority of it. Like I went back out there today and and uh, um, I didn't do triceps, so I went out today, did triceps, and then forearms. Finished up my shit from today. Um, Congress has immunity while in session. That's why they are always in session, in my opinion. When our country was founded, being a senator, senator or representative was a voluntary job. That's why in the Constitution it says they must meet at least 
one day per year because it was a burden. They would go to session, then have to return home to face their constituents. Now they just camp out in D.C. because there was no real cons consequences for their bullshit when they don't have to live around the ones they represent. What do you think he's doing? He's what are you doing? I don't know who it was. Hmm. Well, the reason why they actually camp out in Washington, D.C. is because that's where the money's at. Every day there's somebody coming, every day there's a lobbyist coming to their office to offer them money, trips, bribes, whatever you want to call it. But you stay in Washington, D.C. because that's where the money's at. Does the does them no good to go back to their states because nobody's going to go to the states to lobby them to, you know, put a dollar tax on hamburgers. Sorry, man, you can't have my kids. I spoke with them about something along the lines of them going and working in it for a week and learning some skills. It went like this, me. Hey, Traden, older son, you want to work at SOE for a week and learn something? Traden, silence. Silas, younger son, while running full speed into the room, overhearing what I said to Traden, I'll go. Can we leave tomorrow? That guy's really cool and likes us a lot. Traden, think we can sleep in the room upstairs? Silas, you didn't listen. Dad said we were going to be working. He keeps asking me if I can have the same if he can have the same sign that's on your door made for him. Laugh out loud. He wants one for his bedroom door. Yes, my chick is solid. Just from the little we told you, you can only imagine, I'm sure. Thanks to blessings in disguise. We've learned a lot. We've been humbled and learned to appreciate life and strive to do better. Thanks for the advice you gave me. Also, thank you for how well you treated us and especially my kids. They had a blast while they were there and learned some interesting things. I didn't even know the thing about the Mad Hatter, where the Mad Hatter came from. Thanks again, Edit Scully. Show everyone your smile, man. Um, laugh out loud. Hope you to get to chat with you next trip. Um, your kids liked it while we were standing around bullshitting. That only happens once a year. Yeah, usually. Like that that's like they would not like it here um stay home kids you have it you have it good right now scully what you said about a stress-free life is so true my grandfather lived till he was 99 and my grandmother 100 i have never in my life seen people so stress-free ate whatever they like and were not active yeah i got a i have a neighbor I have a neighbor who uh, is a Mormon, which is weird around, just, it's weird around here. And her whole, fa her whole family, like her husband's gone, she's lost two kids, she's 94 years old. And when I go over there and visit her, I honestly, I, when I'm talking to her, I think, she's not really that old. She's got to be in her early 60s because she's... She's very lucid. She knows what she's doing. She still drives. But she's got no... Like, there's no stress. You can just look at her and see, like, she's just doing her thing. She gets up and walks down the road every day. Um, just no stress. So, that's well, the key. Get rid of the stress. Glad you guys like the Creed. I just copied the Rifleman's Creed and rewrote the thing line by line using it as a template. <laughs> right on, JD. Thank you. Yeah, it means you made it from scratch. John, you mentioned that you like to eat sushi on the weekends since Chef makes quality meals during the week that restaurants can't compare to. While I was in Texas, I craved sushi constantly, but it was hard to find quality sushi that compared to Cali. How long was it before you found a good sushi spot? Um, 35 minutes? I, I don't know. Um, there's a place in Paris that has some rolls. Everybody's got like eel and a California roll and shit, but that's not really what I eat. Um, Jackson, there's actually four, if not five places you can get sushi that are okay. Um, is it? Then, because I don't eat any of the yeah. disgusting stuff. Is it like, if you coming here from where, obviously from where you were, and you used to eat sushi all the time in California, getting it here, is it like Mexican food? Are you eating sushi going, it's good. But it's just not that good. Depends, or do, or do you just you like... When we go to Nashville, get, we get, like, we go to Namas, very good sushi. You go to Virago, very good. It's like this, okay? You like steak, right? 
Yeah? Yeah, of course. Right, okay, so you can get a steak at Denny's. You've seen the Denny's steak, yeah. right? That's a steak, maybe. And then you can go to like a Texas Roadhouse and get a steak, and it's a steak, kind of. But then you go to a really good steakhouse, or you have like your woman makes a steak, like a great fucking steak, right? Or chef makes a fucking awesome steak, right? It's seared off, and when you oh, bite yeah. into it, and it's sizzling, and the fucking, it's, it's just that crust on there. That's what it's like. It's the difference. So, like, you have you have something that is sushi, but you're like, mm, I'd rather have the chicken teriyaki at that place. And then you've got some other shit. Like, I never saw freshwater fish in sushi till I came here. I never saw crawfish in sushi till I came here. There's a lot of fucking breaded and a lot of mayonnaise going on in a lot of that shit. When I look at the menu, even at, like, at good places, I'm like, who the fuck thought that was a good idea, you know? <laughs> mayonnaise. There's a lot of fucking mayonnaise going on. Um, what's the smallest gun you would carry if you really needed to hide it and couldn't let anyone find out? Sometimes, with these tiny guns, I'm thinking it's not even worth bothering. Where do you draw the line between an effective carry gun and something is better than nothing? I think it depends on the situation, wouldn't you think? Yeah, it just depends on the situation. I mean, I, like I said, I, okay, so maybe you've heard this in the past or maybe you haven't. I used to do a, I used to do a class on terminal ballistics. I used to do a class on terminal ballistics. Uh, I still have all the material, but I used to do a class on terminal ballistics. Got a lot of data from the LAPD, a lot of data from the FBI. And here's the thing: you can kill somebody with a 380. I mean, you can, you can kill people have died from getting shot with a 25 ACP. They have died. Um, you. I have seen somebody who was shot 38 times with 9mm and 357 magnums that did not die. They had to put two shotgun slugs in his two shotgun slugs in his ass. It just so happened that while they were shooting him with those guns, they didn't hit a single vital organ. All hits, but didn't hit a single vital organ. So it just depends. I mean, the reality is uh, what I would say with something like that is it's just about how close you are. The closer, the closer you are, you know. If you've got a, if you're just talking about carrying around like a fucking, uh, uh, I just got, I just recently got a, a 1900 FN, a 1900 FN pocket gun. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt used to carry one, used to carry one in his pocket, pocket all the time, and that is in 32 ACP. 32 ACP. They turn of the century, like everybody was carrying around 32s. You ever heard of a 35? I've never heard of a 35. I, heard, I was listening to Jack Spirico talk about it today. So I mean, it just depends on it. Just depends on what you need, and something is always better than nothing. Because here's here's the thing: there, you have two types of people in the world. You have two types of people: those that intend to do you a harm at all cost, and those that intend to just relieve you of your wallet. Uh, there are more of those that intend to just relieve your wallet than do harm at all costs. It's it's actually very rare to have somebody that wants to get in the fight. Unless you're in Mexico. Then they yeah, unless you're in you. Mexico, then they want to kill everybody. But it's, it's kind of rare to get somebody that you're going to run into on the street that wants to get in the fight. And just the sound of a gun going pop, pop, pop sometimes is enough to get that guy to fucking scurry away because... He didn't think you were going to have a gun. So, I mean, it just depends on it depends on the scenario. Yes, I say that something is better than nothing. There's plenty of people killed with 22s yeah, every fucking year. Yeah, something is better than nothing. 35, 35 Remington. He's like, yeah, this old dude mm. used to come across the street and get on my on my porch when I was a kid and lean up against the post, just sight his rifle in. He'd put a, a pie tan up, and if he hit it, it was sighted in, and he killed deer every year. And that's the same gun he was using to hunt bears with. <laughs> I've never even heard of a thirty-five Remington. Yep. Uh, Natasha, holy smokes! Yeah, you got that right. Uh, down with the down for the naked Easter egg hunt. Um, oh shit! This guy like he wrote a lot. Oh god! Skulls! You had me laughing when you said your mother used your father as a nuclear option. Laugh my ass off. And yes, the biggest mistake I made growing up was telling my mother that ass whooping didn't hurt. 
That night, the fucking old man came home and snatched me out of bed while I was sleeping, made me apologize to my mother, and proceeded to beat my ass. Good times. What would your opinion be, Scully, on a decent long-range scope for a 308 bolt rifle that won't break the bank? That's the question. Uh, it, it, look at look at Vortex. Any of the any of the Vortex scopes? They got some good. They got some good scopes. Uh, Sig's got some good scopes out there right now. If you're just looking low end. I mean, not. I don't want to say low end because don't you get a lot of value like like Simmons? I thought. Yeah, you can. You, there's some Simmons. There, there's some tactical. Look at. Uh, God, I wasn't even thinking tactical. Leopold's so good. For Leopold tactical line and stuff like that. You can you can find them. Uh, everybody's here's the thing that's going on right now. If you it just depends on where you're at. If you want a mill dot reticle, so if you can use a mill dot reticle, everybody and their mother is switching to all these fancy Horus and Boris and crazy bullshit reticles. Everybody's switching, which means there are a ton of mill dot reticle military, not military, military style scopes that are on the secondary market for really good money. Leopold was like their Mark Three, Mark Three, very X Mark Three. Yeah. No, the Mark, the M4, I think that they were that they had on the, uh, on the M24s, they were damn near giving those fucking things away because they had mill dot reticles in them, and nobody, you know, all the all the cool guys wanted to get the new Horus and all that other bullshit reticles. You don't need it if you you don't need it if you understand how a optic works. So there's there's a ton of stuff out there right now, and the reality is all of them are getting their glass from the same place, just about. So. Um, you just got to figure out what your parameters are and what you want, you know, once you start going into variable power and shit like that, because you don't, uh, they don't, they're not all equal when it comes to variable power as far as how the reticle looks at, at different powers and where you can, you have to make sure you know where you can range estimate on that variable power. John, keep up the morning rants. They get my day going on a good note, but I missed a few because basically, I have been breaking because I have basically have been breaking the smartphone addiction. It's amazing how it can influence you and not even you not even realize it. On the shotgun micro rig, on the shotgun micro rig, when I put my order in for one, how do I get one in Marpat and matching HR? You can't. I'm guessing I put it in the special instruction. Do not do that. We got dudes doing that. Um, we're sending you whatever the fuck you ordered, just because you put some that that not necessarily to you are, our Christ, but uh, don't fucking do that bullshit without talking to us, because we're gonna send you if you order a black micro rig and you're like I'd like Marpat, we're gonna send you a fucking black micro rig. Um, we're also never refunding your money, so if you do that bullshit, at at best your case, you're gonna get a fucking a gift card back. Just contact John before you do yeah, any crazy don't, shit. Yeah, don't do that shit. Um, especially if it's some bullshit you've never seen us built, do not fucking do that. We have a we have a custom order thread every now and then, if a couple never, times a year, huh? So we never done them in Marpat? No, we do. We no, I don't think twelve gauges. It, that's that's actually doable, but don't don't do that. There's an upcharge for that shit. So um, we have a custom build thread. If you want some crazy shit like with pink thread and yellow webbing or some bullshit. Uh, we charge three times more for that. Every time I open that thread, we literally get so many orders that I can't fucking quote them and reply to them within a day. Like, dude, we'll, if I open that motherfucker up, we'll do $25,000 in custom orders within an hour. So I do that, um, usually take about 12 orders and then lock that bitch down in about an hour. So... Then once they're fulfilled, we'll do it again. With that, you're going to pay three times retail. So if it's a $200 rig, you're going to pay $600. You guys are like, I wouldn't pay $600. That's fine. There's 100 dudes in addition for every one of you guys that will pay that. Um, we also expedite those orders, so they get their orders really quick. So um, send an email. I'm not going to tell you how. Um, you're going to have to figure that out. Send an email and say, hey. Would it be possible to do this? And generally, I'll get back to you and just go, hey, when we run some of these, I will send you an email. Now, what happens is we might run that rig plus six. I don't know how many of those I could sell in, in Marpat. So we might run six. We might run 12. It might be 24, whatever, depending on the color. When we build them, the day they're finished, I'll send you an email and go, hey, these are online. 
a couple hours later, I'm going to put them on social media and they're going to sell out in an hour once we put them on social media. So you better be looking for that email. If you're in Tibet hiking when that happens, you're just fucking ass out of luck. Um, how do I get one in Marpat and matching H harness? I'm guessing put it in notes. Keep up the good work on the podcast. And who the hell cares if chicken is for poor people? Smoked right with brown sugar and spices. I'll be poor and chow time. You go, boy. You go. I ate fish twice today. Mm. Cook, yes. Cooked fish, which I don't ever eat. Mm. Um, Robert Levendy. I saw that bit Scully mentioned on what is safe to eat with the guy who keeps coming back from the future. Yeah, it's a, I saw that commercial several times. It's fucking funny as shit. Uh, hilarious, especially the guy who is sitting down for his for his breakfast. Always love Scully's stories. My favorite is when he was in L.A. during the riots and the policeman tells the Marine to cover him while he enters a house to arrest some guy and they start firing at the house. Please go in a bit more on the inflammation due to sugars and grains. Why not? Um, dude, just put in uh, just put in inflammation and grains. Just those two words in YouTube. You'll find a ton of YouTube videos about that from, from doctors and conferences and shit. Why not get tractors from somewhere else and a different brand? Porsche used to make red tractors. I never knew that. Uh, and, of course, Lamborghini, I think, still does. Great pocket. Because... We need fucking support, man. Uh, yeah, where am I gonna, can, where are you going to get fucking Lamborghini somebody to tractor fucking parts? Come work on my Lamborghini. You know what? Hmm. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing that's weird about this area. Once again, I'm going to say something weird about this area is, like John said, it's it's all about the support. So, for example, I went with the tractor place that I went with. The only reason why I went with these guys is because they had they have three dealers. They have three dealers now. There's actually, there's actually a tractor place closer. There's a Kubota place closer that has it's just one it's just a Kubota dealer. This other place has three dealerships. So I went with them in the sense of they're doing more volume. They gotta have a better situation going. Turns out maybe not. The other issue is maintenance. The weird the weird thing about this area, again, is even though they're all Kubota people, you didn't buy your tractor here. Oh, good luck getting it fixed. Yep. Meaning you got to be able to get it. You got to be able to get it somewhere where it's going to get fixed. And if you didn't buy that particular piece of equipment from that particular dealer, your shit is going to the back of the lot. And chances are, when you get it back, it's going to be worse than when you got it because you didn't buy it from them anyway. So it's just it's really weird buying something here in this in this area. Scully, there's a Del Taco in Atlanta, less than two miles from the Galleria. Bullshit! You could be, you could be less than forty days from having fries and red burritos. What is, is Blade Show less than forty days away? It can't be forty days, is it? John, Wait. thanks for green lighting Tiff Blue Tool Pods and last night's live feed. Hopefully, I can trade that to the wife and get black, get back the Tiff Blue April Fool's freebie pouch she confiscated. Wait a minute, when's Blade Show? June. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting yeah. close. We're... Oh, we're not going to Overland. Did I tell you that? Yeah, you told me that because they're going to be in what, like Virginia. Washington, D.C. or some shit. I'm not defending millennials. I own 30 acres and married with seven years in the Army under my belt at age 30. Kids didn't change parenting. Kids didn't change. Parenting did. A hundred, Yeah, fucking billion percent. But not only that, parenting did change. And we let the kid, we let the schools raise our kids. So those fucking, it, it's in addition. It's not just the parenting. It's the fucking. It's what we allowed to happen while we were not parenting, while they were at school being indoctrinated. Kids didn't change. Parenting did. I had motivation to do shit. Most don't. All the big government shit younger people want came from our grandparents, and they crave more of it. I don't know about grandparents. My grandparents didn't want any big government. You know. Did my mom want big government? I don't even. No, I mean, my think. I say my mom is. My mom is a. She's a liberal. She's a. You know, she always wants to. She well, she's a mom, so she wants to do everything from an emotional. Uh, what what sounds, emotionally right, and. I will talk to her on the phone and try and explain things to her, and when I'm done explaining it, she'll be like, you know what, that sounds that probably sounds right, um, but. 
Yeah, we, it, you know, it's it's a combination of a bunch of things. We we got when you're when you're looking at the '80s and '90s, we got a lot. We got a lot, and people just wanted to they want to pass more on to their children. It's always like I couldn't afford college, so I want to send my kids to college. If I can afford it, why not send them to college? But we keep forgetting that a lot of the stuff that we got in the '90s, you know, a lot of the stuff that the '80s and '90s. We had to earn that shit. You had to actually go out. You went out and earned that ability to do all that stuff. So, I don't know. Right? It's a it's a combination of all things, I think. Yeah, and it sucks that schools are are the ones that are teaching our kids. Dad has had two Craftsman tractors in 20 years. God, I didn't even know Craftsman made tractors. They're not. Granted, he only has like one and a half acres. But for the price point, holy fuck. Good day, sir. Um... Craftsman was smart in that they called those tractors because it made the dudes feel more masculine. Those are riding lawnmowers. They're, oh, they're, they're like the two, tractors. They're like what yeah. you have. They're lawn the two tractor. we have out back. Which, uh, there's nothing tractor about them. They're, they're great lawnmowers, though. We did a I lot would, of yeah. shit with them that you're not I go not out in the woods in that motherfucker. I yeah. drive in the woods and cut trees. Yeah. I mean, I... I, I do, too. All those, craftsman. We literally come up. There'll be a 10-foot sapling. It's probably... That big around, right? Not as big around as, well, no, some of them were as big around as my wrist. Because I'd go up to it and the tractor, the mower would kind of start to push it over. So I'd get back about six feet and hit that motherfucker full speed. I have broken those, those little, I don't even know what those are. Those things that the front wheels go on. They're not like a, a fork like the big mm -hmm. mowers have. But I hit those motherfuckers and those trees kind of like, and then skid across them, and it's like peeling the bark off of it. And then as soon as it hits those blades, boom, 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 and it, it cuts them kind of. It, it, it's real ragged, but after doing that for a while, once that tree dies, and then I put the blade even lower, the deck lower, and just keep hitting that fucking thing. That's how we bush hog, we brush hog the whole fucking property yeah. like that. Um, and, and like we mowed through, like I was, I was putting on, um, a Carhartt jacket and, um, I had on cold pants and a Carhartt jacket, long sleeve shirt, Carhartt jacket, and then I put um, a, a boonie hat on and goggles, and I'd wrap my face up with like a t-shirt, and I would drive into blackberries, like in the thorns, and because they uh, they'll fucking cut the shit out of you. Yeah. But that's how we put we got the blackberries off where we didn't want them. That and those wild fucking rose bushes. Mm. We have these. It looks like a, it's smooth skin like a rose. It has thorns like a rose, produces no flowers, but they'll vine and grow up in your trees and shit. I, we went through fucking acres of property like that. You could not even physically walk through most of the property when we got here. And we hogged it all down with those two fucking lawn tractors from Craftsman, which are really just a, a lawnmower. Uh, the old K5s rock. Yeah, I had a, I had a K5, 1981. Um, Scully, is it true, due to budget cuts, the USMC will switch to Keltex? What the fuck? He's got to be man. fucking with you. Come on, the the Marine Corps, the, the Marine Corps is the only baller out of all the services. They're using HKs. I heard you guys were getting those. They're folding. using they're using fucking HKs. I heard you getting them retorted. Folding. I thought you're getting those folding um those folding carbines. High points. Oh, the, is it is it a high? No, Keltex has a doesn't Keltex have a folding one? I heard okay. that's what because it's more like a Swiss no, Army knife. I mean, the, it's the Marine Corps of today is not the Marine Corps of old. So they're getting HK like four sixteens or what? They have four sixteens, but they bought the HK twenty one XM twenty one. <sighs> no, it's the fucking uh, it's it's like a four sixteen HK twenty nines I think they call them, but it's it's the full auto gun that is going to replace the saw, which is fucking is a total mistake, and all you gunners should get kicked in the balls. But anyways, they, yeah, they got HKs. Bernie wants free college for all. Tell him you don't want four years of college, but will accept a government check for $1,000. They have no answers for this. Everybody can get free college. All they have to do is do four years of service. Four years of service. Or four years of maybe service, even. Four years of service. Hey, you know, you, you know where you can get... Done, done the guard or reserves? Uh, yeah, guard. You get the same GI Bill. Um, or you know where you get free college? You could go rob a bank. Kind of. Well, I mean, kind of college. You still, still have, it's free. You still have to pay for it. I had to pay for all my college classes. How did you pay for your college classes? 
stamping out license plates? No, no. I, I legitimately had to pay for all my fucking college classes. But how much were they? I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, a few hundred bucks a semester. It was it was community college, but my professors were Cal Poly. It was a it was a satellite campus of of Cal Poly. Okay, sorry. I guess you'll have to put some money on your books. Uh, but that's feds. You're probably you rob a bank. You're probably going to state, so you might get some free college. I don't know. Um, just received one of my burrito pouches today. Going to hit up an OG Alberto's that's nearby me. And pick a big burrito tonight for dinner. <laughs> right on. We need a picture of that. Just wanted to say thanks for the podcast, as you're always entertaining to listen to and drive to work every day while sitting in Los L.A. rush hour traffic. Also, thanks for the personal the person note with one of my latest orders that I just received, which was written and signed by you, saying thanks for having over 130 orders and asking what you guys can do for me next. I immediately thought of two things. One, need to see more all gray gear, as I'd love to add more of that to my collection. And two, your message sparked a light under my ass, and I now want to have well over 200 orders to my account, something that I need to work on this year. Thank you, man, Uh, Dave Newman. Thanks, bro. And you got to be more specific about what kind of gray gear you're looking for. We got... there's. There's just 400 versions of bags out there, let alone... Gray, gray's becoming an issue. So Is it? We we buy stuff from... We get hook and... We get Velcro from two different places. Oh, gotcha. Hook. Both of them have no uh, gray Velcro. There's, there's another shade of gray. We can do it, but it doesn't match the Cordura. So I would say a lot of that's going away. Even uh, Astra Alpin, who makes Cobra buckles, has sent out a big press release... Um, they're dropping most of the colors. Like, you cannot just order them. You have to order them in mass quantity now um, and then wait for them to be made up. So they're still going to have the staples, but, like, they're getting rid of sand, elephant, desert tan. They're getting rid of all those colors, and there's just going to be coyote and black. And I think they're still doing foliage, but they've dropped a bunch of that shit from the line. Why is that? Because Cause nobody aren't need- buying it. Because nobody needs elephant, really. That's what we use. Elephant. That's what we use. You don't need it. I buy elephant because it works great on coyote and the lighter color. That's what we've been using. Uh, Which is good because they're going to hit me up and go, hey, we have 27,000 of these and we'll give them to you for a discount. Do you want them? I'm like, yeah, we fucking want them. It's always good when they do that because we're the dude that buys all the rest of the shit. First comment, laugh out loud. Thanks for doing this. Hope there is more than 100. I think in... A bungee chainsaw lanyard would be awesome as well. Uh, they make those. I've seen them for Arborists. Kind of modified sling like you make that Arborists use to keep their saw attached to their climbing belt in case it comes out of their hands. Just an idea. Uh, I own a tree service and would order several. Hey, our single point sling yeah, single works point sling. fucking perfect. Holy shit, does it work good on a string trimmer. String yeah. trimmer or hedge trimmer. Fucking you just push out with that bitch. Holy shit does that thing work. It's like we fucking... It actually works... I shouldn't say that. It works better on those than it does with a fucking rifle sling probably. Um, customer service rant at SOE. I hate Titan Fitness racks and bench. <laughs> Who said that? I hate Titan Fitness racks and bench review. Who the fuck said that? That's uh that's awesome. Titan Fitness does seem to be uh, where are, shit. Where are these? Where are, I don't know. Where are we all? I don't know why it's doing that. Numbers now and no names. That's time. I don't I don't know what this is. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe because there's just so many of them. Um, Rogue. Everybody knows Rogue. There's a few things you hear. No matter no matter what you hear about Rogue, it's too expensive. But it's the best. They have fucking quality. They have fit and finish. And they have customer service. I do not own a single piece of Rogue fucking anything. So I'm not like the Rogue fanboy. But I've watched fucking 500 videos. I've watched every fucking comparison video there is with Rogue and any other company. Um, Elite FTS, you're not going to beat those dudes. Um, Rogue, on the other hand, you can buy their bars and they'll fucking custom build it. I can put Scully... And I can have it done up in fucking camo. They got a fucking multi-cam one. And I can put Scully 8541 on that motherfucker. Mm. 
They will build that fucking bar. I can get an Ohio Power Bar. I can get whatever I want. They will build it today and ship it tomorrow. You can't fucking beat that. They just built a 650,000 square foot facility and employ 600 people. When you go there at 10 o'clock at night, their customer service staff is fucking, they have a full staff answering telephones. You can't beat that shit. I've been watching what they're doing. They're doing some cool shit. I want to do some of that shit within our business. And I think you guys have been seeing a little bit of it. That's kind of part of the inspiration of that. In watching all that, you hear Titan Fitness. Titan. And, and so Rogue, you buy a $385 custom barbell or $5,000 worth of plates and that racks and whatever. Actually, It is. I mean, that it, seems cheap. it seems cheap because you know manufacturing. Yeah. Now, you can buy a barbell for $100. You can buy a barbell off Craigslist for $45. There's different types of bars. They have yeah. different spring. They have different marks. If you're deadlifting, you don't want them fucking serrated right there, you know, gnarled, because they fucking eat the shit out of Pretty your legs, clear. right? Tear your clothes up. There's a lot of stuff that you don't know until you know. So, you pay shipping on that shit, right? Yeah. That's, metal that's metal is expensive fucker. to ship, right? Yeah. And that's where this Titan thing comes in. They're like... Titan Fitness, you can get it for half the price, and that includes shipping. Well, yeah, it's fucking most of it. Most of it's shit for the dude who wants a bunch of gym equipment in his garage, but isn't actually going to use the gym equipment. It's awesome for a dude that's going to go out there and work out every now and then. But really, that fucking that squat rack, he's just going to hang a bunch of clothes on it. Titan Fitness is fine, but Rogue, that's another animal. Like that shit's machine, and it has fucking bearings, and it's. It's like, it's it's the shit. Some stuff Titan makes, no problem. Fucking buy it because it's going to work just the same as the Rogue is. But the majority of it's not, and it's not as clean. Like Titan, Titan Fitness has this bar. They call it a football bar, right? So it's, picture like a ladder. So instead of holding a barbell to bench because my shoulder's fucked up, the handles mm -hmm. are like this. So I can bench and not have the shoulder problem that I have. Well, they cut it out Titan. It says Titan in there. They put the bar together. They fucking powder coated the bar and then cut out Titan. So when you get your bar, there's metal shavings inside this motherfucker and they're falling out through the fucking word Titan. So when you're bench pressing, you might get, you better wear some goggles. <laughs> like for real, dude. Like it's no bull, like silly shit like that, right? Um, so they were so blatant. They hit the scene a couple years ago from what I can gather and they made a website that literally looks like Rogue. They took all Rogue shit and fucking. It's Confident. literally like they bought it and took it to China and go, hey, can you make this? Rogue didn't say shit. Maybe there's not patents, whatever. Rogue was like, remained pretty silent about this. And they launched this new website. It looked, dude, the same font. I mean, everything. They just changed the word. Words. Like, it, it, like, Rogue Fitness, Titan Fitness, top left. Drop down means same thing, right? <laughs> so then these guys are like, oh, Rogue ain't fucked this up yet copy paste they literally copy and pasted they fucking t word for word took their verbiage I'm like oh that's a that's a pretty bold move then they were just getting a little careless and they actually snatched some of rogues photos and put them on their shit rogues photos rogues models says rogue on there you can see the rogue on the shit like literally took their are you photo sure? are you sure this is not like a joke are you sure this is not rogue stunt? Rogue doing specialty operations equipment. No, I get sure you. I got you, bro. That's it. Rogue sounds like it doesn't. So Rogue finally came out and fucking has launched a lawsuit, like twenty point lawsuit. <laughs> fucking crazy. But uh, yeah, if you want to buy some, if you're just gonna go out there and, and, bro, I like to bench press. Buy a Titan bar, whatever. Buy a Titan bar. I hear the foam shit in it. I'm not. I'm not buying a bunch of Rogue shit. I'm not buying any Titan shit. I'm buying a uh, an FTS. Uh, uh, FTS um, Elite Fitness uh, bar. I'm buying a couple Rogue barbells for the sole reason that they're fucking camouflage and they got a hot pink one. They just look fucking rad. And I just, I want to experience the customer service. I've heard so much, like, I have a fucking gym's worth of equipment right now. I'm going to go buy another fuck, because I want to experience that. I want to see what that is like. I want to see, does it really get here? Um, Another one's First Form Nutrition, Andy Frisella's company, right? I use, I sell Swinney Nutrition, and we are now um, 
a run everything labs dealer like our our shit we have a ton of run everything lab stuff coming you're going to be able to we're going to you're going to be able to buy that from us when you order your shit you're going to be able to get our REL stuff um i use andy forsella's opti greens because i heard people talk about it and i just wanted to try it do you know that every order you get from them comes with a handwritten order a handwritten <laughs> thank nope. you everything so amanda shows me a note the other day and it's not just like on the receipt written like it normally is on the um, packing slip. She's got this card. I'm like, this is fucking rad. Order a thousand of these. Get them made with our logos and all of our social media shit on them. And I go, what did you order? She goes, I didn't order anything. I go, well, then how'd you get this? She goes, they sent it to us in the mail. I go, and you didn't order anything? She goes, no. So I don't know what the algorithm was that tripped that. You have to have spent a thousand bucks or your tenth order Something, or yeah. whatever it was. And it's a handwritten note from this dude or or this chick. I don't know which I don't I it's a name that could be a, a guy or a girl. Hey, I'm your I'm I'm your rep or whatever. Um anything I can do for you, please let me know. Anything that we can do to make the company better, if you have any concerns, um anything you want to let us know. Um, any praises basically here's my personal email address cool I'm like that's good to go so we sent them some t-shirts and tool bags fucking here give these to whoever you like within your office and uh it was it was just cool it was it was fucking neat but it's just it's just the customer service of that and um i just thought it was cool i don't know how i even got off on it africa rifles part one 416 rigby james jager recommended for you what the fuck am I... Oh, these are... Um, you know what these are? These are videos I copy-pasted too far down. So when you go down sure. past ours, these are videos that YouTube's recommending to us. I'm like, what the fuck? Made for, made for good content, though, I guess. Yeah. Accident. All right, we're at... Uh, we wrote that mark, I think. 90 minutes. Uh, 636. Josh, Josh Winnie says the gate's locked. Josh Winnie. All right, guys. All right, guys. Woo-woo! It was fun. That much closer to 100. <laughs> Josh says the gates locked. Should I should I shave for 100? Locked him in here. <laughs>